Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Broadcom, ticker symbol AVGO. So we're going to look quickly at Broadcom's business, and then we're going to see if we can come up with a fair value for Broadcom stock using discount of free cash flow. And ultimately, we're trying to see if this is worth adding to our investment portfolios today. Okay, so let's jump right into this. So this is Broadcom segments based on their 2020 revenue. And we can see that their semiconductor solution segment, well, this accounted for nearly three quarters of all of their revenue in 2020. So this segment produces a ton of different products, everything from set-top boxes to Broadcom motor uh, modems to routers, Ethernet switches, uh, fiber optic parts, LED, uh, LED lights, the list goes on and on. And then they have their infrastructure software segment. Right now, the infrastructure software segment accounts for about 28% of revenue. And just a few years ago, just to illustrate, back in 2018, well, this segment accounted for just 9% of total revenue. We might ask, why the big jump? Well, in 2019, Broadcom bought Symantec, the Symantec business, from another company. This was their enterprise security part of their business, and Broadcom paid about $10.7 billion for it at that time. The revenue generated from Symantec ultimately lands in this segment, which is one of the reasons they saw a jump from 9% to 28% last year. Okay, now as far as what this segment brings to the table, well, this segment provides uh, mainframe software, uh, business operations technology, cybersecurity, which is where Symantec came into the whole thing. And again, the list goes on and on. So broadly speaking, in my opinion, it seems that Broadcom is well diversified and well positioned for the future. The world is heading to, pla to, to a place where there's going to be the types of products that Broadcom makes in so many end products. So I think Broadcom is well positioned for the at least the foreseeable future. Okay, now let's look at a bit of the numbers. I think a logical place for us to start is with Broadcom's revenue. So when we look at their revenue over the past few years, well, we can see they've had some fantastic growth recently. But this was really kicked off in 2016 when Avago Technologies bought Broadcom for about $37 billion. Now, at that time, this is one of the largest semiconductor deals ever. But really, what it did for today's Broadcom is it took, it took Broadcom's strength at that time, which was engineering, and it took Avago's management team, which had a reputation for being highly efficient, especially around the integration of new acquisitions. And clearly, it looks like this combo works because we can see that revenue really began to skyrocket after the two companies got together. Plus, this growth has sort of been in line with the man Avago's management team's strengths of acquisition. So we already saw that in 2019, they acquired Symantec. But on top of that, in 2018, Broadcom acquired CA Technologies. In 2017, they acquired Brocade Communications. So I think that the proof is really in the pudding here that Broadcom's ability to acquire companies and use that to keep growth going seems to be working. That being said, let's take a peek at Broadcom's free cash flow and see if we can come up with a fair value for Broadcom stock using discount of free cash flow. So this is a chart of Broadcom's free cash flow going back to 2014. And this also includes the next three years of analyst estimates. Those are the green bars. But here's why I went back to 2014. So our question is, do we believe that these analyst estimates are reasonable estimates? If we can believe those numbers, well, that makes leaning on our fair value calculation using discount of free cash flow even more important, more, even more reliable. So I went back to 2014 because I was able to find analyst estimates for free cash flow going back to 2014. And interestingly, in 2014, management, Broadcom's management team, came up a bit short of analyst estimates when it came to free cash flow. They missed again in 2015, missed again in 2016, and then in 2017, which was the first full year that Broadcom's new management team, after coming out of the Avago deal, well, that was their first full year, and in that year, they actually missed again slightly. 
And in 2018, Broadcom beat analyst estimates for free cash flow. They beat again in 2019. And in their last full year, which was 2020, once again, they beat expectations. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is telling us that they will beat analyst estimates every year going out the next few years. They certainly won't beat every single year. But what I am suggesting is that Growth estimates seem fairly reasonable given one, their, their own ability to grow their underlying business and their growth by acquisition strategy. That being said, let's jump over to our discounted free cash flow calculation to see if Broadcom stock is worth buying today. Okay, so we can see that when we take analyst estimates and discount them back to today, well, we get a fair value of, for the entire company of about $716 per share. But generally, we're going to want to account for the debt, for their company's debt, net debt, debt minus cash, in this whole calculation. So Broadcom has about $40 billion in debt, about $11 billion in cash. We adjust that, this calculation for net debt, and we end up with a fair value for Broadcom stock of about $645 per share. Right now, Broadcom's trading closer to $560 per share. That means that if we believe analyst estimates are at least somewhat close, well then, there looks to be upside of about 15%. And given the stability of their broader business and the what we can say is the long-time optimism around the types of products that they produce, well, it seems to me that Broadcom stock could be a very good buy today. Now, of course, it depends on each of our own investment portfolios. I know personally I own Intel, although I am really tempted to add Broadcom to my portfolio as well because I like the growth, I like what they're doing, and I think it's possible management keeps acquiring other companies and keeps growing. So I'll let you know if I'm gonna add it to my portfolio. But we're also running, we're also managing a few different investment portfolios over in our private investing community. For example, we have a dividend portfolio that we're managing, uh, that we're building over there. Broadcom currently has a dividend yield of about two or 3%. So this could fit well in that portfolio. They also are offering a decent amount of growth, so it could fit well in our growth portfolio. So we, there is a decent amount of choices for a company like this. Now, if you're curious to see if we add Broadcom or what stocks we do add to the different portfolios that we're building, or even if you just wanna know how to build a solid investment portfolio, perhaps you wanna consider joining our investment community. We do private investing live streams on building investment portfolios or how to analyze stocks. On Fridays, we do a quick discount of free cash flow calculation uh, live stream where we take the tickers at the company that the community throws at us. We do a quick calculation of the of that particular stock, a whole bunch of different stocks, and see if they're worth doing a deeper dive on. So I will leave a link to the, our Patreon page, which is ultimately the gateway to get into the private investing community. I get a link to that in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.